This map simulates calls made on the Verizon network. Some calls are U.S. to U.S., some U.S. to foreign territories, some incoming from overseas. According to a report in the Guardian newspaper, the NSA has data on all of them. Apparently, the NSA has been requesting and receiving call data from major U.S. carriers for the past seven years, renewing the request every 90 days. Hey, good morning. They don't receive the content of the calls, no audio recordings or transcripts, but they do get the underlying metadata, which number called which number, and how long the call lasted. In 2006, USA Today broke news of a similar program under the Bush administration, but this is the first proof that data collection has continued under President Obama. Ellen Nakashima has been reporting on this and joins us now. Uh, is this news? Did we not know that this was happening? We did not know that yes, that this was happening to this scale, or that this sort of data collection was happening at all under the Obama administration. With the uh, court order that The Guardian pop, pop, uh, got a copy of and published yesterday, last night, we have seen for the first time the sweeping nature of the order and the collection that it authorizes. It's everyone. Every, it says all call detail records for uh, Verizon Business Network, a subsidiary of Verizon. It's uh, uh, calls into or out of the United States, um, as well as calls wholly within the United States, domestic calls. Only Verizon? It seems strange to only track Verizon calls. Uh, most analysts and civil liberties uh, advocates assume that the government is obtaining similar orders for all the major carriers. There has been widespread support uh, among Congress today defending this program. Uh, Congressman Mike Rogers uh, specifically came out to say he, he couldn't get into the details because they're classified, but that this program had thwarted a significant uh, terrorist attack. That's right. And uh, the uh, chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee also said that this data has been very useful in um, solving or thwarting several, you know, other uh, working toward um, solving terrorism plots and making arrests. It's called protecting America. And she pointed out the um, members of Congress have been briefed on the program and have had the opportunity to read about the, you know, the classified details of the program, though she said she's not sure how many members of Congress have actually availed themselves of the opportunity yeah. to uh, read the program. Is there any question over whether this is legal? Yes. Uh, some analysts are, are wondering how the government can obtain such broad sweeping data on a sort of going forward basis, right? This or, uh, order authorizes the government to collect for 30 days starting, you know, from today, let's say. And Section 215 of the Patriot Act really was intended, they say, for historical collection of records that existed at the time of the order was issued. So Calls that happened in the past. Right. And for collection of prospective um, call detail records, especially on such a, a broad set of, of customers, they say you would want an order that has more specificity to it, where you identify the people whose call records you want. In this case, the order doesn't say so. So they're wondering how this law can authorize such broad collection. Therefore, there's a chance that the program could could cease? or Because everyone in, in power seems to be saying, hey, this is cool. It's part of the law. We all knew about it. Yeah, so you are also hearing some senior Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee today calling for oversight hearings into the program, into the Section 215 program, and saying that they had raised concerns in the past and had opposed this sort of broad sweep of, um, of authority uh, in the surveillance program. but the law is as the law is. And so they are calling for um, oversight hearings and potentially legislation to try to curb some of the authorities here. Okay, Ellen, thanks a lot. Thank you.